High School Davao City Division Tele Radio Broadcasting. Good day to our dear grade 10 students. I'm so glad that you have tuned in to your favorite channel airing this Tele Radio based instruction in science. I know that you're so excited to watch this video entitled The Effects of Electromagnetic Radiation with me, Mamir Solmaasi, as your teacher broadcaster. As you carefully listen and understand what the topic is all about, you will get to learn something meaningful and important science concepts and ideas. Today, we are going to learn the effect of electromagnetic radiation on living things and environment. So, sit back and relax as you view some slides that would help you visualize the effect of electromagnetic radiation. Are you ready now? That's great! Okay, at this moment, let's take a look at your science module in quarter 2, module 3. Do you have any idea about the topic? Great! Happy to know that you still have the knowledge about the topic. Alright, here we go. Our topic today is about the effects of electromagnetic waves to living things and environment which is based on the most essential learning competency of the Department of Education. After going through with our discussion, you are expected to differentiate ionizing from ionizing radiation, determine the sources of radiation exposure, and identify some biological effects of exposure to radiation. Can you still recall your previous lesson about some applications of electromagnetic waves? How important are electromagnetic waves in our day-to-day -day living? In your life as a student, can you describe the significance of your mobile phone, Wi-Fi, computer, television, and others? Well, it's good to recognize the significance of electromagnetic radiation to us. In Module 2, you have learned that electromagnetic waves consist of both electric and magnetic fields. They are coming from man-made and natural resources. Some of the most common sources of electromagnetic field that everybody experiences are the solar radiation, the electric current that supplies households such as mobile phone, television set, Wi-Fi, microwave, and computers, antennas, and telecommunications. However, you've got to be aware that these technologies, though have beneficial effects, they also have adverse effects to human body and to the environment as well. Let's come to know this. Let us perform the activity entitled Acoustic Electromagnetic Waves. Do you still remember the different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum? Now, try to compose an acoustic code. A form of poetry where the first or last letter of each line spell a name, word, or phrases out of it. We have the letters R. What do you think does it stand for? We have the letter M, I, V, U, X, and G. Can you state some uses or application of electromagnetic waves? A few minutes later. All right. Very good, you've done it well. Are you familiar with this picture? Write all your inferences about the picture. The symbol is called P4, also known as an international sign used to indicate radioactive sources, containers for radioactive materials, and areas where radioactive materials are stored and used. The presence of the symbol, a magenta or black propeller on a yellow background, on a sign denotes the need for caution to avoid contamination or undue exposure to atomic radiation. What are the effects of radiation to humans? As you all know, radiation is an energy emitted from a body or source that is transmitted through an intervening medium or space in absorbed by another body. Its transmission is in the form of waves, but when particle to volume. 
We may even see a radiation in our bodies or exposed to radiation's cavity. Radiation only becomes a problem if we are exposed to too much of it. It is classified as being either non-ionizing or ionizing. Non-ionizing radiation is a form of radiation with less energy than ionizing radiation. This includes radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, and visible light. Unlike ionizing radiation, non-ionizing radiation does not remove electrons from atoms or molecules from materials that include air, water, and living tissue. Ionizing radiation is a form of energy that acts by removing electrons from atoms and molecules of materials such as air, water, and living tissue. This includes ultraviolet radiation, x-rays, and gamma rays. A familiar example is ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Overexposure to it may cause eye and skin damage and in the worst case, lead to cataracts, glaucoma, or even skin cancer. Let's go deeper into it. Take a look at this figure. Energy absorbed from an ionizing radiation speeds up the movement of atoms and molecules, which is equivalent to heating the sample. Although biological systems are sensitive to heat, as we might know from touching a stove or spending a day at the beach in the sun, a large amount of non-ionizing radiation is necessary before dangerous levels are reached. Ionizing radiation, however, may cause much more severe damage by breaking bonds or removing electrons in biological molecules, disrupting their structure and function. What are the sources of radiation exposure? Background radiation is all around this whole planet. Most of it are forms naturally from minerals. These radioactive minerals are in the ground, soil, water, and even in our bodies. Background radiation is all around us all the time. Most of it forms naturally from minerals. These radioactive minerals are in the ground, soil, water, and even in our bodies. Background radiation could also come from outer space and the sun. Other sources are man-made, such as X-rays, radiation therapy to treat cancer and electrical power lines. There are sources of low-energy radiation that we use daily, such as our microwave ovens and cell phones. But their health risks seem not with great concern based on current research. How about the biological effects of exposure to radiation? Radiation can harm either the whole body, which is somatic damage, or X in fur, which is genetic damage. Its effects are more pronounced in cells that reproduce rapidly, such as the stomach lining, hair follicles, bone marrow, and embryos. This is why patients undergo radiation therapy often feel nauseous or sick to their stomach, lose hair, and have bone aches and so forth. And that's why particular care must be taken when undergoing radiation therapy during pregnancy. Different types of radiation have different abilities to pass through the material, based on our favorite thing. A very thin barrier, such as sheet or two-fold paper, or the top layer of skin cells, usually stops alpha particles. Because of this, alpha particle sources are usually not dangerous if outside the body, but are quite hazardous if ingested or inhaled. Better particles will pass through the hand or a thin layer of material with paper, wood, but are stuck by a thin layer of metal. Gamma radiation is very penetrating and can pass through a thick layer of those materials. Some high energy gamma radiation is able to pass through a thin plate of concrete. Certain dense high atomic number elements, such as lead, can effectively decrease gamma radiation with thinner material and are used for shielding. The ability of various kinds of emissions to cause ionization varies greatly, and some particles have almost no tendency to produce ionization, 
Our particles have the twice the ionizing power of fast moving neutrons, about 10 times that of beta particles, and about 20 times that of gamma rays and X rays. And now let's proceed to the effect of electromagnetic radiation to the living organisms. Radiation carry considerable energy. When traveling through matter, they transmit their energy to the surrounding atoms to molecules. This transmission results in excitation, ionization, and dissociation of atoms and molecules along the radiation path. These reactions can damage cells and even break up the molecules. Radiation can render cells incapable of division. It can also change the structure of the DNA molecule, which determines the nature of the cell and thereby of the whole organisms. Divided cells are most susceptible to radiation damage. Pregnant women should not be exposed to radiations, not even X rays. The growing fetus in mother's womb is most vulnerable to radiation damage. The damage of the cell will pass on its newly acquired characteristics from generation to the next location. The damaging effect of radiation in cells and tissues have been proven to reduce them because radiation can retard or stop the growth of cells. It is being used in food preservation. Gamma rays destroy microorganisms in insects, including their eggs, which spoil food. Thus, radiation is used to extend the shelf life of potatoes, onions, and corn. It is also used to delay the ripening of fruits like mango, and also to stop or destroy certain types of tumor or cancer. What are the devices that can detect and measure radiation? Several different devices are used to detect and measure radiation. Bag foods, Geiger counters, Scintillation counters or scintillators and radiation distillators. To check if you will learn our discussion, let us perform the activity Understanding Electromagnetic Radiation. Complete the table using the information we have learned. The first one is one for you. One eternity later. Did you get the correct answer? We are done with our lesson today on the effect of electromagnetic radiation of living things and environment. Have you learned something today? For your assignment, kindly you read and answer additional activity found in your module. If you have queries or point for clarifications, please don't hesitate to contact your science teacher. Congratulations! You have done a great job. Hopefully, that you could apply what you learned in your day to day life. In tomorrow's lesson, we will be talking about light. Viewers and listeners. I hope you had fun today. I am your Telerado program broadcaster, teacher Musical saying, Never stop learning because life never stops teaching. Goodbye, students. Have a great day. 